Right, so fossil soils kind of explain their formation and describing them. You, you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to get asked to describe and explain one of the soils we're going to look at, either a pod soil, a brown earth, or a clay. Uh, the two more popular ones are pod soils and brown earths, uh, with clay being the least popular one, but I think it did actually appear last year. All right, so. Uh, I'm not in the business of predicting exam questions until it's been at least 10 years before I can say that might show up, that might show up. So we just need to learn them all at this stage. So basically it's an extensive group of least acidic soils. Hopefully we should know that and we'll find out why. Distinctive light coloured horizon found immediately below the organic debris. So that's basically below the, your pine needles. Uh, some more hummus with no recognisable plant remains due to a distinct lack of plants being there in the first place. Brightly coloured zone of iron aluminium deposition, which then links into your iron pan just below that. A darker zone of organic deposition and basically the sea horizon is your parent material at the bottom, which remains uh, kind of untouched. All right. And most pod soils are free draining, so there's a uh, lack of water logging unless we want to discuss a wee bit about the iron pan later on all right so there's a profile there's what it looks like you can see you've kind of got your ash gray color where the nutrients have kind of left it linking in towards the bottom of your more orangey color your iron pan where the kind of iron nutrients have been leached out of it again leaching happens because precipitation exceeds evaporation so there's more kind of rainfall then there's evaporation happening in these areas. Areas that tends to happen, places like the Cairngorms, where you're getting a lot of snow melt and uh, heavy rainfall, that kind of thing. Yeah, so we can link it into what we know about uh, glaciated areas. So this just kind of labels uh, the different areas, but that's a wee bit too much detail for what we need at the moment. So material, right, this is soil forming factors, this is specific to a pod soil, this is the bit you want to pay attention to, this is the bit you want to add labels on to your diagram, alright, so the parent material, the sea horizon is acid rocks, often from granite or schist, right, which then forms a more acidic soil, climate, it's cool, precipitation is greater than evaporation, you then have to link that in, what does that cause, it causes leaching, from that grey horizon that we looked at, that ash grey colour. Vegetation and organisms, coniferous woodland, coniferous not carnivorous, <laughs> still gets me Scott, still gets me every time. Alright, heather moorland, which again adds to the acidity of the soil, it makes it more acidic. Uh, it's a slow breakdown, so there's limited or no mixing. And when we're talking about slow breakdown, we can link that back into climate. Because if it's a cool climate, think it was your freezer, there's a lot less decomposition happening. All right. Topography, stable sites from sea levels to mountain summits. Basically, that's kind of where it happens, the shape of the land. Where, when we're talking about it in our heads, we want to be thinking about areas such as the Cairngorms National Park. All right. Uh, particularly when you talk about what the pod soils are used for, and then that links into our hill sheep farming in the Cairngorms as well. And time, since the end of the last, last ice age, 10,000 years. Again, remember I've done the maths in my head there, just to, to show you that. Alright. So, basically, different organic material you can find. Not a lot. Alright, there's no worms that mix it up. There's no kind of moles or anything in it, purely due to the sort of cold climate. Again, we're thinking Cairngorms, that kind of thing. Uh, again, picture on the right kind of shows you where it would be. That looks a bit like a quarry to me uh, from there. And again, you can see the different clearly defined horizon, that picture on the left. Yeah, from the very thin sort of top layer where not a lot of plants grow. Right down to that kind of ashy grey colour. Yeah, right down to it starts turning a wee bit more orangey where the iron has leached out of it. 
So what are they used for? They're generally fertile, non-productive. Used for forestry, that's where we get the pine needles from. Yeah, because the soil's not great. You can't grow many crops on it. Uh, hill sheep farming, particularly in the Cairngorms, when we talk about land uses, that's the reason why. If it is used for agriculture, it has to be limed and it has to, a lot of fertiliser has to be used, and it has to be used every single time, just because the soil is so poor in terms of fertility. Alright, and there is an example question. Describe and instead of analyse, it would uh, be explain a pod cell profile. So, can we take anything from that and add it to our diagrams just now? Alright.